Hello and welcome to another video for AP2D Art and Design. My name is Katie Campbell and I teach at Alta High School in Sandy, Utah. I don't know about you, but at this time of the year, my AP students are stressed out. So before we get started, I would like us to all take a mindful moment. We're going to breathe in for a count of five, hold for a count of five, and breathe out for a count of five. Go ahead and close your eyes and breathe in. Three, four, five, hold. Two, three, four, five, breathe out. Three, four, five. Let's do that one more time. And breathe in. Three, four, five, hold. Two, three, four, five, and breathe out. Three, four, five. That feels good. We can do this. More importantly, you can do this. So let's get started. Today's video focuses on the elements and principles of design explained. We are going to review the requirements for the portfolio. Where can the requirements be found? How have the requirements changed? We're going to take a look at the vocabulary listed in the rubric. Where can the vocabulary be found? Identify which of the principles of art and design seem to be most confusing and look at artwork that visually represents those principles of art and design. You probably already know where to find the course exam description, which contains all of the requirements for the portfolio. So this slide may be your review. In my class at the very beginning of the year, I handed out copies of both the course exam description and the rubric and showed my students how to get onto AP Central. You may also know that the requirements for the portfolio have changed. Instead of submitting 15 images for the sustained investigation, you are now responsible for submitting 10. Now notice that I said images, not works. In the sustained investigation, you can use process images. For selected works, we used to have to send in five, but instead of five, being mailed in, now the change is you will be submitting three selected works and they will only be submitted digitally. If we go to the sustained investigation rubric or the selected works rubric, we can find the vocabulary listed for the 2D design skills. Let's take a closer look at those 2D design skills. Use of two-dimensional elements and principles, point, line, shape, plane, layer, form, space, texture, color, value, opacity, transparency, time, unity, variety, rhythm, movement, proportion, scale, balance, emphasis, contrast, repetition, figure ground relationship, connection, juxtaposition, and hierarchy. When I look at this list, there are a few 2D principles that I feel like my students seem to struggle with the most. The first being opacity and transparency. Time, juxtaposition, and hierarchy. These are the principles that I'd like to focus on today. So let's take a look at opacity and transparency. Take a few moments to look at these images. Opacity and transparency is used to describe how much light can pass through an object or a layer, ranging from transparent through translucent to opaque. As you can see in these three images, there are varying levels of transparency for three very different purposes. 
The image on the left adjusts the opacity of varying layers to represent the intertwining of memories, past and present. The photograph in the center plays with the different levels of transparency from a cast shadow. And the image on the right directs the viewer to a focal point by adjusting the opacity of the marks made. This slide focuses on the principle of time. Time is all about the passage of one moment to the next. Take a few moments and look at these images. As you know, we don't currently have the ability to submit video. So time can be a tricky principle to represent. These three examples show ways to, to explore the passage of th time through using a still image. The image at the top shows a series of still frames taken from a video. The image on the bottom left is a narrative of the interaction of two characters during a period of time. And the image on the right is a still frame of a performance with a sculpture and a projected image. For me, one of the biggest benefits of the written commentary that accompanies the images in the portfolio this year is the opportunity for the artist to give the reader context around their imagery. Oftentimes when showing time, this context is crucial. Juxtaposition is about comparing or contrasting ideas, concepts, concepts, elements, etc. Take a few moments to look at these images. Each of these three images presents two things placed close together in contrast with one another. Without necessarily knowing the story behind the work, the viewer can connect to the artwork through the comparison or contrast concept simply because of the artist's placement of their subject. When we talk about or look at hierarchy, we are considering the organization of what we see, play, paying close attention to what is dominant or what is implying importance. As you design levels of dominance, you create visual hierarchy in the design. Ideally, the visual hierarchy will match the conceptual hierarchy seen in the content. Take a few moments to look at these images. When looking at the image on the left, the circle at the center of the top of the image is the obvious focal point. It's the first thing that we see, and it leads us to the rest of the image. In the top image on the right, we see figures behind the lines of string or something. Not sure what is dominant until we get to the arm that is extending beyond those lines, breaking through that plane. At that point, we realize that the figure is the important dominant layer. So look back at this photograph, the image on the top right. As soon as that arm and elbow poke out, the line that that arm and elbow create take us past the plane of string into the figures, and that becomes our focal point. In fact, at that point, sometimes those strings or bands almost disappear. We don't notice them as much because we're focusing on the dominant subject. The image of the installation on the bottom right is an interesting one when thinking about hierarchy because the artist projects the process images above the product. As viewers, we realize that the process of creating this work of art is ranked as the most important aspect of the piece. Now we still see the product there and the artwork is the combination of the product with the projected image. But what is most important? What takes the hierarchical 
importance is the process that we see happening in those projected images. Now that we've gone through the possible confusing 2D principles of art and design, let's take a look at some others just for fun. Here are some examples of emphasis. Take a moment to look at these three images. Take a look at the variety of materials used. There is no limit to what material can or cannot be used for a 2D work of art. And especially at this time when we're working with materials that we have at home, open your mind to what materials might be around that you can use to create your art and designs. I also want you to notice that almost all of the examples that we are looking at utilize multiple 2D principles of art and design. I may be pointing out one and using that image as an example for that one principle. However, the reality is that most artists use many of the 2D principles together. For example, the image on the far right fits with repetition and pattern as much as it fits with emphasis. The image on the top left fits with space and movement, texture and unity, as much as it fits with emphasis. These two works are fun examples of pattern and repetition. Take a moment to look at these images. Both images seem to be, be dealing with death. Death happening on the left and death that has happened on the right. The image on the left shows a bowl of repetitive human-like forms in a bubblegum colored light-hearted way. The repetition of those figures and forms carries us around and through that piece. The image on the right utilizes the repetition of lines to create a pattern where the skeleton becomes a part of the surrounding texture. It almost disappears within the texture. These two examples play with the idea of figure ground relationship. What is the figure? What is the ground? Take a few moments to look at these images. The image on the left has an ambiguous figure ground relationship, which means we're not really sure what is the figure and what is the ground. The artist has used opacity and transparency to arrange the different shapes into multiple intertwining layers. So this work could have been used as an example for opacity and transparency. But back to this figure ground relationship. The artist has also used complementary color schemes on the left to create dynamic contrast. And then on the right of this image, you see analogous colors that bring the flow of the piece back into balance. So I chose this piece specifically because it does bring the question, what is the figure and what is the ground? The image on the right, if you look carefully, has removed the face and arm of the figure, allowing the viewer to question, what is the most important information here? Is it the figure or the surrounding area, the ground? Not sure. And that question is what the artist has created for us. Once again, an artist rarely isolates a principle of art and design. More often than not, there are more than one of the principles at play in any work of art. When we are looking at and using the 2D principles of art and design, don't be afraid to push the limits. Combine the principles and utilize them to bring your ideas together. So let's review. Make sure that you know the requirements for the portfolio. Look at the vocabulary listed in the rubric. 
and create artwork that shows visual elements, evidence, visual evidence, sorry, of the principles of art and design. We know that these are difficult times and the College Board is here for you. If you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, please let us know. Thank you for joining me. Please don't forget to take a mindful moment and just breathe and then get back to creating amazing artwork. You can do this.